Guys, so this is a show and tell here at Amoeba Records in Hollywood, in Los Angeles. Uh, what do you call this segment? Called What's in My Bag. This is a uh, this is Odyssey and Oracle by the Zombies, which is uh, a wall-to-wall -wall fantastic record. If you are, if you love British invasion music and uh, feel like you've heard every Beatles B-side that you've ever cared to hear and want to just rediscover a fantastic era of music in its uh, total magnificence. This is, um, you just can't go wrong with this record. It's really one of the best records ever made. Um, I actually had a CD of this, a reissue of this record that is uh, somewhere in the back seat of a car that I think I sold a couple of years ago. When the love runs high in this time, give it to me easy. This is a very curious record. Uh, this is uh, Oliver Nelson's Skull Session. Oliver Nelson was an arranger in the 50s and 60s. I think he, he worked with a lot of the big bands, uh, did very elegant arrangements for big bands in that sort of Billy May era, but also uh, more in the kind of post-bop arrange moment. He did an incredible record called uh, Blues and the Abstract Truth, and there was a, a sequel to that. This is obviously from the 70s. I have no idea what this sounds like. I'd imagine it could be really insane. It could also sound like some Miles Davis record that people don't like. This one's a bit of a gamble too. This is uh, um, the Lost Generation, they had a big hit in the 60s called The Sly, the Slick, and the Wicked, which is an incredible song. I'm hoping there are other incredible songs on this album. I'm not entirely sure. This is, uh, this is actually a reissue, uh, and um, they're reissuing a lot of records these days that you don't know whether they should be reissued or not, but I'm optimistic. This is Annie Ross. She was the one of the members of uh, Lambert Hendricks and Ross. Uh, the album is called A Gasser, which is a really uh, archaic jazz term that might not have even been that cool at the time. Uh, she was a, a notorious nut. Um, I, she might still be alive, in which case, on behalf of the band, I'd like to apologize. Um, but uh, she's a fantastic talent. She made a record with King Pleasure that everybody should check out. This is a Zoot Sims record. I really don't know anything about this record, uh, but uh, the stuff she did with King Pleasure is really the best stuff that I would recommend. I wonder why each night and day I pray the Lord of above. This is Blossom Deary. Uh, an album called Give Em The Ooh La La that was made, I don't think this is the original cover, again, I think this is a reissue. Um, she made records through the 50s and 60s and 70s. She was a cocktail jazz lounge singer in New York City at some of the big uh, places in New York. She's got a very eccentric voice. Um, uh, I think a lot of people uh, sort of compare uh, Nellie Mackay to uh, Blossom Deary because they both are very solid piano players and have great voices and have just this, t you know, tons of personality. Blossom Deary's voice is truly different. Um, but uh, she does great, uh, curates her albums really well. She's, the song selection on her records is kind of amazing. Uh, she's not a writer most of the time, but she picks her music very, very carefully. And, uh, and she's awesome. And a lot of people don't seem to know who she is, which surprises me, because she has a very popular kind of appeal. It was just one of those things, just one of those crazy flings. I don't collect many things. I, I buy records, and uh, 
I love listening to records, but I don't, I'm not really like a, I don't have like a rare record collection. Um, but I do have a small collection of 10 inch records. And so when I saw this, I thought it'd be interesting. And it's, it's going for the bargain rate of uh, $4. So I figured I couldn't go wrong. It's uh, Woody Herman, Riding Herd. And it's a bunch of weird songs. And it's, uh, it's off their house party series. Whatever the hell that was. <laughs> This is a, also a great album if people are interested in a really hardcore uh, California funk from the 70s. Um, Charles Wright and the Watts 103rd Street Rhythm Band. They had a song that a lot of people have heard called Express Yourself, which is not the Express Yourself other people have done. At the end, by the end of the song, it sounds like he's, his, his, his brain is actually flying out of his head, uh, which is very, very exciting. And there's a beautiful ballad, a strange, unlikely ballad called Loveland on this record. And uh, it's a really solid record and they're an incredibly, they're sort of the uh, 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 pre-parliament funkadelic, big mo mob band kind of uh, outfit. I don't know how many people are in the band, like eight or nine guys, but it's a, it, it's a pretty impressive effort. And happiness is the answer, got to take me with you. This is a reissue that I'm kind of curious about just because you so rarely get to hear. Again, Odyssey and Oracle by the Zombies is a really great album uh, by a, a British invasion band kind of in their psychedelic prime. These Hollies records weren't really widely released in the United States, and so you I, never get, I never see them. I have no idea what the album cuts are like on this. It could be really good. It could be really bad. I've seen him every day with And my final section is uh, Oscar Peterson playing with Anita O'Day. I actually uh, had a chance to meet Anita O'Day a few years before she passed away. She was an incredible female vocalist, um, really not given uh, her props by the jazz community for a lot of very weird reasons. Very progressive singer, um, fantastic, phenomenal talent. She was also a really reckless person um, and a notorious drug addict. So. Maybe her reputation uh, was sullied by her own behavior more than anything else. But um, she was a full-blown nut when I met her, and uh, a very exciting person to talk to. She made a ton of great records, and I suspect uh, this one, in, in small combos, she played with Gene Krupa a lot in big band settings. Um, that uh, They're cool arrangements, and they're very, very exciting performances, but you don't get to hear her sing in, in really top-quality, smaller combos. Um, but I think with Oscar Peterson, this might be a, a good choice. We'll have a happy ending now, taking a chance on love. That's what's in my bag. I'm taking a chance on love. Weeba!